My name is Paul Lenz and today we're going to talk about common and natural logarithms. Logarithms are a type of exponents and are used to solve many different types of problems. Many times we think we don't need logarithms, but if the value that we're trying to find is not an integer or a 1.5 or 0.75, where the decimal might, might happen to be irrational, we need to go to logarithms. Now, we have two types of logarithms. One logarithm is what we call common logarithms, logarithms to the base 10. Those can be found on your computer as well as your graphing calculator. The second type is called natural logs. Natural logs are to the base E, which is used an awful lot in business and also in some of the sciences such as chemistry and physics. On your calculator you have a logarithm to the base 10 and that logarithm happens to be abbreviated just as LOG. You have a logarithm to the base E, which is abbreviated LN. No E shows up, but if you look on your calculator right above it, you will see E raised to some power, which is we will use later on, so the value of E is there. What I would like you to do is take LOG8 on your calculator and see if you get the decimal 0.9030 This happens to be an irrational number. The thing is, the calculator or computer only shows so many digits. If you would then hit LN3, you should get the decimal 1.09861 And again, that happens to be an irrational number. It is not the value exactly. So as we go on, we will talk about what we need to do if we would like to save everything. You need to remember that logarithms are exponents, and as such, we have many different rules. The relationship between logarithms and exponents can be seen from the two values where we would say logarithm to the base A of B is equal to C, and then an equal situation would be B equals A to the C power. The one on the left happens to be logarithmic. The one on the right happens to be exponential. So if we have logarithm to the base 10 of 100 equals 2, we could change that into an exponential equation of 100 equals 10 squared. And if you would on your calculator hit logarithm of 100, it will come out to be exactly 2. On the same token, we could say logarithm to the base 5 of 125 is equal to 3. We would say 125 equals 5 to the third power. The problem becomes we do not have a logarithm to the base 5. If you hit logarithm to the base e of e to the fourth as 4, we would say e to the fourth equals e to the fourth, and therefore we know that is true. Now the question becomes, all of these have been integers. What happens if we would take 14 equals 2 to the x power? Well, we know that that answer is somewhere between 3 and 4, because 2 to the third power happens to be 8, and 2 to the fourth power happens to be 16. There are a lot of different rules which come out. There is a, what we call a change of base, logarithm to the base a of b, is equal to logarithm to the base d of b divided by logarithm to the base d of a. Now the d can be either logarithm to the base 10 or it could be logarithm to the base e. It really doesn't matter. So if we take an equation which would be 71 equals 8 to the x power, we would change it into a logarithmic form which would be logarithm to the base 8 of 71 equals x. Using the change of base formula, we would then say logarithm to the base 10 of 71 divided by logarithm to the base 10 of 8, or we could even hit ln or logarithm to the base e of 71 divided by logarithm to the base e of 8. If you do either of these or both of them on your calculator, you will see that you get the same value. In other words, 2.04991507. Now the question is, does this make sense? In other words, 
do we really know if it's the right answer? Now, if we would take a calculator, take 8 and raise it to the 2.04991507 power, see if you get exactly 71. You should not. The reason is the calculator really needs to store more than what is actually there. So if we would go back and store ln of 71 divided by ln of 8 and we store it as x on our calculator and then we come back and take 8 and raise it to the x power you will see that that comes out to be exactly 71. In other words, no decimals at all. And that's how we can change those. There are three other transformations. Logarithm to the base a of u to the n power is equal to n logarithm to the base a of u. And again, the a can be either in the base 10 or the base e. We can also say a logarithm to the base a of u is equal to u and also log to the base a of a to the x is equal to x. Now all three of these transformations are really taken off the very first one we started with change of base and we can take those as well as the statement when we change from logarithms to exponents going back and putting those values in. We would like to take and work the problem 14 equals 2 to the x power. Now if we take 14 equals 2 to the x power, what we would first like to do, and we may do this either in log to the base 10 or ln, and I'm going to use ln, I would say ln of 14 equals ln of 2 to the x power. Now, using one of the theorems that we have, we would like to say that ln of 14 equals x of ln of 2. Now, dividing both sides by ln of 2, we're going to get a value of x. Now, you take that value of x and put it on your calculator. And once you have stored it on your calculator, take 2, raise it to that x power, and see if you don't get exactly 14. And if we remember from the prior values, that number should be somewhere between 3 and 4. There happen to be two types of logarithms. One is common logarithms, which is logarithms to the base 10. The other happens to be natural logarithms, which is logarithms to the base e. The question now is, what is e? e is defined as a quantity 1 plus 1 over n, that quantity to the n power, as n increases in value. So in other words, if we would take n to be 2, we would have 1 plus 1 half, that quantity squared, and we're going to get a value. We would then take 1 plus 1 over 3, raised to the third, that quantity to the third power, and we would get another value. If we continue up and put 1 plus 1 over 100, that quantity to the 100th power, we would get a value closer to E. And you can try a couple of examples. Put in 200 for N. Put in 300 for N. Put in 800 for N. See what happens to the value on your calculator and see if it doesn't get closer to this value of 2.5. 7182818284459 Now you also have to understand that the calculator has certain limitations and you may put in a value which is too large and it may say does not compute just try a smaller value of when we need the base e or logarithms we're going to take a problem such as the one that says I would like to have the pH of a particular solution and know its acidity rate. And in this particular problem, we've defined certain parameters, and we have a situation where we say that pH is equal to the logarithm of 1 divided by H plus. H plus represents the number of gram atoms of hydrogen ions, and in this case, pH stands for the acidity, and we've defined that something called red, super red tomato juice 
has a pH of approximately 3.9. Now, if we take the problem and substitute the values in, we end up with 3.9 equals logarithm of 1 over H plus. What we would like to do in this case, using the special rules that we have before, is take the anti-log of both of those particular sides. When we take the anti-log of the logarithm, we eliminate those two values, so we end up with an equation which says the anti-log of 3.9 is equal to 1 over H plus. If we solve that equation, putting H plus on one side of the equation and everything else on the other side, we have an equation which says H plus equals 1 divided by the anti-log of 3.9. Instead of hitting log 3.9, we need to hit second log, which now means I'm going to have logarithm to the base power, in this case of 3.9. That means my H plus value is going to come out to be a value of 1.2589.25412 times E to the fourth, which really means 10 to the minus fourth power. And if we abbreviate that and round it off, we get approximately 1.26 times 10 to the fourth gram atoms per liter of solution. If we take Newton's law of cooling, and we put the values in where we have particular values. In other words, A is 114, K is 0.05, and we're going to heat this value up to 220 degrees when we have a room temperature of 70. We have an equation of 90 equals 114 E to the minus 0.05 T plus 70. We would subtract 70 from both sides of the equation, giving us 20 equals 114 e to the minus 0.05 t. Dividing both sides by 114, we get 20 divided by 114 equals e to the minus 0.05 t. Now, as in the prior one, we took it to the logarithm to the base 10. This one, because we have an e value, we would like it to take both sides to logarithm to the base e. That now gives us an equation ln of 20 divided by 114 equals ln of e to the minus 0.05t, and from some of the prior rules, we would say that's equal to minus 0.05t. Dividing both sides of the equation by minus 0.05, we get t equals logarithm to the base e of 20 divided by 114, and that quantity divided by minus 0.05, and we get approximately 34.8 minutes. So we're now going to look at the next set which deals with business. And in this case, we have P equals an amount times the quantity 1 plus R over N, that quantity to the N T power. We're going to put $10,000 in the bank. We're going to pay you 5% per year compounded monthly, or in other words, 12 times per year and we would like to find out how long it takes to raise $15,000. The equation becomes 15 equals 10,000 times the quantity 1 plus 0.05 divided by 12, that quantity to the 12t. Dividing both sides by 10,000, we get 15 over 15,000 over 10,000 equals 1 plus 0.05 divided by 12, to the 12t power. Then taking both sides, simplifying 1 plus 0.05 divided by 12, we get 1.5 equals 1.041 repeating 6, that quantity to the 12t power. We're going to take both sides to logarithm to the base 10, and that gives us logarithm of 1.5 equals logarithm of 1.04, 1 repeating 6, to the 12t power. If we bring that down again with the special rules that we have, we now have a 12t in front of logarithm of 1.004, 1 repeating 6, equals 12t. And then again, dividing both sides by 12, we get an approximate time of approximately 8 years on that particular calculator. 
We've talked about log rooms to the base 10, which is common log rooms. We've talked about log rooms to the base E, which is natural log rooms. We've used these log rooms both to find values which are not integers, as well as to solve problems in chemistry, physics, and business.